Hello and welcome to a multiplayer update for Legacy of the Void. In this video, we will be discussing both new additions and changes coming to the Terran race with the final installment of the StarCraft II trilogy. First up, let me introduce you to the Herc. This barracks unit is anxious for a head-on fight. The Herc comes equipped with the ability to grapple onto targets at range and get up close and personal. Able to one-shot Banelings while dishing out small radius splash damage, the Herc is particularly adept against the Zergling Baneling composition. Keep in mind, though, that the Herc is unable to attack air and will have difficulty against larger Zerg ground units. Against Protoss, Hercs are particularly strong due to their high health and light armor. Nothing makes them happier than to jump in and break up a Protoss army. But it only takes a few well-placed zealots to deal with the Herc squad, so prepare yourself to counter appropriately. Up next, meet the Cyclone. This gal has a one-track mind. Able to focus down units at range by targeting opponents one at a time, locking onto them, and dealing damage on the move. The Cyclone moves at the same speed as Stalkers, making them a solid choice for establishing early map control while picking off priority targets in the process. If you intend to counter the Cyclone, initiating combat swiftly and in force will work to your advantage. Moral of the story, if you're slow and big, you're gonna lose against the Cyclone. However, there are always opportunities to counter the Cyclone's mobility. All right, let's talk about changes coming to current units in the Terran roster, starting with the Siege Tank. You can now pick up and drop tanks while they're in Siege mode. We dig the idea of creating opportunities to harass with the Siege Tank that weren't previously possible. In general, we think providing more opportunities to control your army in masterful ways is an exciting way to push StarCraft II. And now the big boy, the Thor. Thors will now be capable of self-repair. It's a pretty simple change. Use emergency repair to heal after combat, and you can bring the unit back up to full. The only drawback is that repairing a unit will prevent it from both attacking and moving. There is a whole world of creative combat options when Thors travel in groups and rotate opportunities to repair. Banshees are another unit getting some attention with Legacy. We're interested in providing more opportunities to micro Banshees against ground units. So, we're implementing a speed upgrade available once you've built a fusion core. After acquiring the speed upgrade, Banshees will be capable of outrunning mobile detection units, even an upgraded Overseer or Observer. This makes the Banshee much better at surviving counterpressure that can come against harassment attempts. All right, last but not least, let's talk battle cruisers. These iconic capital ships can now teleport anywhere on the map without vision. Keep in mind, though, that using this ability will cost a lot of energy, so choosing when and where to move is incredibly important. Clearly, there are opportunities where this call makes great sense, and when help is needed, you can get there almost instantly. That wraps up our summary of design changes coming to the Terran race with Legacy of the Void. Keep in mind that everything is subject to change as we move into public testing. That being said, we hope you're as excited as we are to share in a new experience of StarCraft that will be more fast-paced than ever before. Thanks for watching, and be sure to check out the changes coming to the Zerg and Protoss armies as well. I'm Cloakin with Blizzard Entertainment, and we'll talk to you soon.